Hello, this is Tom with Buncombe Shinola. Today we'll be talking about Johnny Shines. You know, a couple nights ago I was doing about what I normally do, looking for an old exploitation movie to watch, and I stumbled upon Velvet Vampire, uh, 1971, I believe. It was directed by a woman, had a cool ad campaign. Um, it was Roger Corman's New World Pictures. It had that guy who got decapitated at the end of Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. I mean, why not? Sure, sure. So sure, I checked it out. We're about ten minutes in. Uh, the lead character's already killed a guy. And she meets up with some of the other characters at an art gallery. And the entertainment at the gallery opening is someone playing Delta Blues. And slowly, it is revealed that the person playing is Johnny Shines. The Johnny Shines. And I was pretty taken aback to randomly stumble upon this overlap of two of my twin obsessions that is pre-electric blues and bizarre old cult movies. And it had me considering the astonishing width of Johnny's career arc. So who is Johnny Shines? Well, I used to own a record store, and when you're a, a music geek, there are artists that you really just think are so great that it pains you that they are not better known. And Johnny Shines is one of those. He's probably barely known at all outside of uh, the circle of blues fanatics. So, you know, he was born in 1915. He lived uh, almost to be 80. I mean, it was his century. It was Johnny Shines' century. And in his teens, he crossed paths with one Robert Johnson. Together, Johnny and Robert Johnson crisscrossed the nation, hopping trains, playing juke joints. And in fact, Johnny Shines was going to accompany Robert Johnson to one of his recording sessions in San Antonio, Texas. However, he lagged behind because Robert Johnson actually had a bus ticket and Johnny was hitching. Roughly a year before Robert Johnson's death, they parted ways. After his death, Johnny continued to plug away. Um, he recorded in the 40s, but that was not issued until much later. And he even recorded a few songs for chess in the 50s, but those also were not issued until much later. In fact, his frustration as a musician grew to the point that in the 50s, he essentially retired for a decade. An infuriating lapse of missed opportunity. Then, in the mid-60s, when the white acoustic folk blues resurgence began, Johnny Shines became one of the rediscovered figures to find new fame. His old recordings were finally released, and he began recording new, mostly adhering to his original style. And in the early 70s, somehow manages to land himself in the background of this movie called Velvet Vampire. The closed captioning and subtitles will refer to this song as Evil Hearted Woman, although it is not the Johnny Shine song of that name. It is a song, as near as I can tell, does not appear on any of his records, and it even features a verse clearly written specifically for the film. In the daytime, you bury yourself deep down in the Mississippi mud, and at night, you feast your eyes upon the sweetness of human blood. After the film's release, Johnny continued to record, but he was not afraid to experiment in full band formats, even utilizing horn sections. And a few years later, he releases a record called Johnny Shines and Co. Johnny Shines and Company. For this LP, one side was acoustic solo blues and the other side was with a full backing band. The backing band was Bob Bromberg and his group. And at that time, the drummer was a fellow named Mark Bell. Yes, that Mark Bell. This would be a few years after he had recorded with the band Dust, but quite a few years before he found his greatest fame playing punk rock with bands such as Richard Hell and the Voidoids, and most notably as the drummer for the Ramones, Marky Ramone. So yes, here is this record by Delta Bluesman Johnny Shines, playing with one of the Ramones, 
on songs with titles like Shotgun Whoopin'. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and as long as I'm connecting dots, I guess I'll point out that not too much later, Marky Ramon would appear himself in a Roger Corman New World production, a little movie you've probably heard of called Rock and Roll High School. As the decades roll on, Johnny Shines continues to record and play, never hesitating in, but perhaps growing a bit weary of his role as elder first-hand Robert Johnson authority. Even after a stroke hindered his ability to play guitar, he never strayed too far and always adhered to the original music that he had played in the 30s. Jumping freight trains, ruling juke joints with Robert Johnson. From decades before rock and roll to damn near all the way to the end of the century, Johnny Shines went from Robert Johnson to the Ramones, with a pit stop detour with Roger Corman in the middle. To me, Johnny just shines on and on. Here's to him. And here's to you checking out more of his stuff. I'll set you up with some good introductory links down in the details below. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.